Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing my Batman ranking. Now the embargo has lift on the Batman, I'm going to be doing my ranking of all the live action Batman films to this day. And so I'm only including solo films, even though Batman has appeared in other films like Justice League, Basically anything with Batman in the title or related to the Batman, so the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight Rises is counted in this ranking. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCEU videos later this year. So as some of you know, even though we mainly do DC TV videos, we've been doing a lot more DCEU videos recently in the lead up to the Batman and the Flash film, which we're going to be heavily covering because obviously we're a Flash channel as well. But I've been excited about the Batman for a very, very long time, especially since the DC fandom trailer was announced. And even just way back when it was first mentioned that Robert Pattinson would be the Batman and also Matt Reeves would be directing, it just sounded like a great project. And so now the time has finally come, I was lucky enough to watch it a couple weeks ago and I rewatched it earlier this week. And I have some big thoughts and opinions on the Batman that I can't wait to share with you guys. But before this video went out, my review, it's no spoilers, went up for the Batman. I'm going to leave it in the top right corner of the screen, click on it right now, watch it, come back to this video, and then see my ranking of all the Batman live action solo films. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So as far as how I've ranked things, there is 8 Batman films, and I'm including Batman vs Superman because Batman's in the title, but I'm not including something like Justice League because that's a team up film, right? And I've not included any animated films, just not to complicate things because there's a lot of animated films, but I have to say I love the Batman animated films, and the Batman the Animated Series is one of my favourite shows ever. So as you guys can tell, I'm a lifelong Batman fan, I've always loved Batman, and so let's go ahead and go into this ranking. Number 10, let's start with this. So I actually don't remember this film that well because it's been a while since I watched it, However, I just remember feeling like it wasn't the best, and it definitely knows what it's going for. But it kind of made a joke out of Batman and the characters surrounding, in a way that can be laughed at, but it's not the same way as like the 1966 Batman, which was just outright hilarious, and it wasn't in your face, it was just funny. And this is obviously more of a satire, and so this film I'm talking about is of course Batman and Robin. So this is like the most crazy Batman film ever and I'm pretty sure I would rank this and Batman Forever pretty close because they do play into that kind of world that Tim Burton set up but then they make it crazy, they make it funny and they pretty much strip out most of that darkness. And I think a big thing about Batman and what makes him so compelling in the comics and in the later films and before this film with the other Tim Burton films is his darkness and the fact that he can be that figure, that vigilante in the dark, helping the citizens of Gotham and scaring the criminals around him. But in this case, in Batman and Robin, he's just kind of a laughing stock. Like, there isn't much seriousness in this film, and I just don't think it bodes that well for a Batman film. And so that's why it's my last place, and obviously Uma Thurman is there as Poison Ivy, and then we have the completely ridiculous and over-the-top Arnold as Mr. Freeze. Yeah, it's true, once you've watched it, you can't get it out of your memory, but still, it's just way too over-the-top. Okay, so number 9 is Batman Forever. This is a pretty close pick. I couldn't decide which one to put either way. However, this is the continuation straight after Batman Returns. And we have Val Kilmer as Batman, who is a little bit better than George Clooney. And I think that is literally the sole reason why it's slightly above. Also, Jim Carrey as the Riddler, completely over the top. Again, starting this kind of new satirical phase for Batman in the films. But that only lasted two films, because after Batman and Robin not doing very well, there was years where we never had a Batman film. And then came Christopher Nolan, who completely revitalized and revived that kind of Tim Burton-esque Batman, but modernized it for today's society. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Number eight, this is Batman vs Superman. I really loved it at the time when it came 
came out because it was like the most hyped thing like Batman and Superman in a film together fighting against each other it just sounded amazing and when I watched it I loved it and I watched it a couple of times and I was pretty young when I watched it I think I was like 15 16 but over time I've sort of looked back and compared it to the other Batman films and even though I do enjoy the film I think there is quite a few components in the film that don't work as well as some of these other Batman films, mainly in regards to Doomsday and Lex Luthor and that story. I don't think it's actually too good, and obviously the Martha thing is a meme, and it just has a few things like that that hinder it from being like a really good Batman film. It's a good Batman film, but nothing much more beyond that. However, I do really like the way it set up Zack Snyder's Justice League because I'm a big fan of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Even though this isn't in the ranking, like I said, because it's a team-up film, I do like what they did. I think Ben Affleck is a good Batman. However, I don't think he got the time to shine like someone like Christian Bale or Michael Keaton or how I think Robert Pattinson is going to have time to shine as Batman because Ben Affleck never had a solo film. Batman vs Superman isn't just solely a Batman film, it splits its attention, and so therefore, his character arc overall in the DCEU feels a little bit incomplete, and so that's why I'm happy that he may be reappearing in the Flash film later this year. And even though I do like Ben Affleck as Batman, I don't think he's developed as well as some of these other Batman. Okay, so let's move on. My ranking for number seven is Batman the movie. So, the 1966 version of Batman, which I'm a huge fan of. I love the TV show, and like I mentioned before, this isn't to say that I don't like this Batman film because I do really love it, and it's very nostalgic for me. My dad used to show me the TV show and the film when I was younger, so I do have big admiration for it, and it's kind of bonkers, and it's really a great time to watch because it's just so kooky like Batman using shark repellent and then you know going on the boats going in the motorbikes going in the cars fighting Joker Penguin Catwoman the Riddler all together it's awesome like it's a great time watching this film and so I have no complaints about this film I actually think the filmmaking is really good it's very solid it's classically Hollywood in the way that they used to shoot films back in the past so I do like that element because it has some sort of nostalgia to it, especially because all of these other Batman films we're talking about, they're quite modernised, even the Michael Keaton ones, because by the time of the early 70s, the conventions of Hollywood filmmaking totally changed, and so this film came in 1966, a couple years before any big kind of filmmaking regime changes, so that's why it has that kind of classical touch to it, and I really do think Adam West as Batman is just great, and I have a really good time watching it, and I was just re-watching some clips recently, and it's just so much fun, like I especially love the villains and the way that they team up, I think that is actually something that we've never seen and we should see in the future, like a whole group of villains teaming up together, obviously we've seen that in the Arrowverse, we've seen it on TV with the Legion of Doom before, but in the DC Universe in the films, it's pretty much been just solo villains most of the time. Okay, so let's move on to my number 6 pick, this is Batman Returns, the sequel to Batman 89. This film introduced a lot of interesting ideas, especially in regards to Catwoman. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is really, really great as Catwoman. I really was surprised by the Tim Burton films. I actually didn't watch them until a couple of years ago. That was my first time, and so I have no idea why I didn't get around to it, but they are extremely gothic, and Michael Keaton is great as Batman. Like I said, Michelle Pfeiffer is great in Batman Returns and the Penguin, Danny DeVito is so good, and I think it follows on from Batman 89 in the best way possible, and it's a shame that they weren't able to do a third film with this cast. So Batman Returns, really great film, I really really do like it, and I can't wait to actually rewatch it, hopefully I get to do a little bit of a Batman rewatch since the Batman is out. Okay, so let's move on to the next pick, this is number 5, we have Tim Burton's Batman 1989 film. So I love this film, and like I said with Batman Returns, it was really shocking to me that I hadn't watched it up to that point, because this film is great, like obviously Michael Keaton's brilliant, but Jack Nicholson, what a joker. 
I love everything about the film and the gothic world it sets up and Tim Burton's vision is fantastic and I think it's really quite different from the rest of the Batman films. And that's one of the reasons why I really admire it, because I really, really like Keaton, I like Jack Nicholson, but obviously I prefer Christian Bale and Heath Ledger, but I don't really like to compare them because they're two completely different films set in different realities, literally, because Burton's Batman is set in this kind of gothic world that seems very fantastical, and Christopher Nolan's films are set in a world that is very familiar to us because it looks like you could go to Chicago, you could go to all these big cities like New York, and you can maybe stumble across something that looks somewhat like the Gotham of the Dark Knight trilogy. But obviously Tim Burton's world, you can't step in that. That is highly stylized, that is something out of his own mind, and I think it's fantastic for that quality. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to say about Batman 89, I just think it's a really good film. I think most of you guys will agree with me. So let's move on to my number four pick. Now, this is where it gets really tight, because as you guys know, I'm a big fan of the Dark Knight trilogy, and I also liked the Batman. And I'll go into my thoughts in a minute, but I'm going to pick number four as Batman Begins. So, Batman Begins obviously started the Dark Knight trilogy, with the introduction of Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne and Batman, the first Christopher Nolan Batman film, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises really owe a lot to this film, and so it mustn't be dismissed even if people prefer The Dark Knight over Batman Begins. However, I have to say it's one of the best superhero origin films, and I love the way that it sets up Batman and sets up Gotham in this kind of new realistic world like I mentioned before, it had been a while since we had a normal darker version of Batman, and what Christopher Nolan did with Batman Begins was set it in a modern world, and rather than making it completely a superhero film, he makes it more of a kind of crime thriller, and that goes for most of the Dark Knight trilogy and even the Batman, and so I think it's a great start, and it definitely sets up what's to come. I like Scarecrow, I think Killian Murphy is very good, and I love that he shows up in the other films as well, and it continues that kind of thread from the first film. And then also, Ra's al Ghul is interesting. I think he is definitely one of the weakest points of the film, if I was to call out anything, only because it's sometimes a bit unrealistic and a bit fantastical. However, I do like the idea of the League of Shadows, and there are a couple scenes in the film where the CGI is a tiny bit dodgy, especially as the train goes across Gotham, but again, that's 2005, they didn't have the technology like we do today. So I have some minor flaws of it and some minor nitpicks, but they are nitpicks at the end of the day, and I love Batman Begins, so that's why it's my number four pick. So this was very tight, top three. I'm gonna go number three, The Batman. So the new Batman film starring Robert Pattinson, it's extremely dark, it's very brooding, and it's very atmospheric. If you guys have checked out my review, you can see my full thoughts on that. Also, I'll leave the link in the description below to my discussing film article where I review the Batman in words. I feel like I'm most clear when I'm writing, so hopefully you guys can go check that out as well. And so my thoughts on the Batman is, I loved what they did here. I loved his kind of take on the Zodiac Killer, twisting everything that we known from past iterations of the Riddler in the past like we mentioned before, Jim Carrey, totally over the top. This version of the Riddler is scary. He looks like a normal person, and I love the way that it ties into real-world events, but I won't go into too many spoilers because you guys need to see the film. But I think the best part of the film is definitely, apart from the cinematography, the duo of Batman and Gordon as this kind of detective duo, because they can't trust anyone, the whole city is corrupt, and it's about cracking down on those criminals, but in the meantime, they have to figure out the Riddler's clues, and so they work together, and they have many scenes where Robert Pattinson and Jeffrey Wright are so good, and I love that it plays into the kind of noir aspect of Batman, where he is just detecting. He is the world's greatest detective, and here he truly is. He's always looking, he's always staring at people, and I love that this film takes its time with everything. It's slow, it's meandering, it gets to the point, and when it does, it really hits. It has this long kind of overarching story of Batman trying to figure out what his true meaning and true calling is as a 
potential vigilante or is he a hero? What is his mission? Is it vengeance or is it something greater than that? It really hit home, especially as the film closed. So that's why the Batman is so high up and I've watched it twice now. I'm going to watch it many more times and maybe my ranking is going to change, but it's one of the best Batman films. I can confirm that. So that is the pick that you've all been waiting for because it's the new film. Highly recommend it. Please go search out and watch the Batman in cinemas when it releases on March 4th. Number two. Now, what is this? Is it The Dark Knight or is it The Dark Knight Rises? In fact, number two and number one are very close, but these are some of my favorite films of all time. So number two is The Dark Knight Rises. I love The Dark Knight Rises. It's a personal favorite for me. It hit at the perfect point as I was growing up. I think at the time when it came out, I was 12 or 13, and I was just completely obsessed with it, especially when it came out on DVD. I would watch it over and over and over again. I was obsessing over Bane and his voice and Batman fighting Bane and just all of the storylines in this film come together so well and it's shot beautifully by Wally Pfister. His cinematography throughout the Dark Knight trilogy is some of the best of all time and it has an incredible ending that is very sad, it's very touching but at the same time it's so mysterious and it's so kind of epic. It has that feeling of epicness because it ends with Hans Zimmer's score roaring and you see Batman sitting in a cafe in Paris and you're like, hmm, is this real or is this not real? Is this in Alfred's mind? I get chills every time I watch this film, like the rise scene as he tries to get out and they're all chanting for him, but especially the ending scene, like I mentioned, it just really gets to me and every time they play it in IMAX in London at the BFI IMAX, I always go because they play it on film and it's just beautiful to watch in the experience and I especially love it when they do triple bills of the Dark Knight trilogy and I really hope there is another one very, very soon. So the Dark Knight Rises, one of the best endings of all time and one of the best films in my opinion of all time is up there on my like top 50. It's definitely in like my top 20 favorite films. So yeah, I love The Dark Knight Rises. I love the ending, especially with what they say with Robin. Like that just gets to me like, yeah, of course he's Robin, but just the fact they say it, it gets to me every time. And I actually find myself just watching the ending online sometimes. Now it's finally time for my number one pick. My number one pick is of course, the Dark Knight. In fact, this is my favorite film of all time. I tie it with Pan's Labyrinth whenever anyone asks me, what's your favorite film? I say The Dark Knight or Pan's Labyrinth. Christopher Nolan's one of my favorite directors. This is my favorite trilogy of all time. You have an Oscar winning performance in Heath Ledger's Joker. He is absolutely insanely good. One of the best Jokers of all time. And I think everything is just on top form in this film. It's the best of the best in terms of acting, cinematography, direction, writing, production design, editing, and my god, the score. Hans Zimmer's score is just incredible and it's off the charts good. There is so much that can be said about The Dark Knight and has been said about The Dark Knight that I don't feel like I'm adding anything new by saying it's one of the best films of all time because it's been said by so many people. But nevertheless, it's one of my all-time favorite films, and I have to say, most of these Batman films, the top eight, you can't go wrong with them. Like, there is always something in it for you as a spectator, as a Batman fan. They're quite different, like I said, the Nolan trilogy, the new Batman is probably closer to the Nolan trilogy than anything else. And then you have the Keaton Batman, which is just like this whole other kind of gothic world. You've got Batman the movie from 1966, such a great fun camp time. Then Batman vs Superman, something very hard hitting and high in stakes, like it incorporates Batman into a whole new world. And then you've got like the completely off the rails Batman with Batman Forever and Batman and Robin that just completely kind of lost themselves because I guess that's what they thought people liked, but it turns out people like darker Batman and that is one of the reasons why the Batman is so good. So the new Robert Pattinson film is coming out on March 4th. You guys are going to want to watch it. It's really, really great. I've seen it twice, plan to see it many more times. So super excited for you guys to all catch it. 
Hopefully I didn't spoil anything throughout this video. I just wanted to give you my overall ranking just before you go in and watch the Batman in a couple of days time. So if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps get this video out there. Also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.